Welcome back to the Wizard's Yacht, and today we're going to take a look at some of the things we've actually done to this boat that I didn't personally do, but we had the marina here do for us. Let's take a look. One thing that's not been revealed to you guys yet is the new name of the boat. And just like the constellation out in the stars, Cassiopeia. That's what the name of this boat is. Before it was Trishalin or something along those lines. It's had three or four names in its life, but this is its new name, Cassiopeia. Let's go ahead and take a look at the side of the boat. So one thing you'll notice right now, it's not really evident, it's, doesn't, it's not blaring. But if you look along the bottom where the water meets the boat, the hull, it's shiny new paint, new black paint. This paint actually has copper in it to inhibit algae or marine growth. But they have actually hauled the boat out of the water and completely sandblasted the whole bottom. All new paint. There's also some th through hole fittings that are little circular shaped things along the water line that were damaged that has also been replaced. We were going to have them do a buff job where they actually buff the white portion and make it shiny again and they called their guy out to do it and he started to do it and he realized that this hasn't been done for so long that he says it's going to be needed to wet sand all of it and then he can polish it and it was going to be thousands of dollars and I was like no nah, I don't think I want to mess with that but let's go ahead and do the rest so for now we're not doing the buff job maybe in the spring I'll try to, different products or see what I can do myself. But the bottom is perfectly clean like brand new again. All along the whole bottom. It's nice black paint. There's one more thing they did as well. Let's go to the rear of the boat. So I'll try not to fall in the water. And I'll show you guys what they did. Directly below my knees is an aluminum brace. Right there. There are five of those. They used to be teak, and they were halfway rotten through. While I had them out, the dock master actually recommended just to put aluminum tubing. It'll last decades. It's actually quite a bit stronger, and to me, it actually looks a lot better. I was kind of uh, iffy on the old teak ones because they were, like I said, they were halfway rotten through. I was like, man, what if this thing breaks, or what if it breaks off while we're standing on it? Now that is no longer a problem. So everything that we have just mentioned, you say, oh, well, that's a few hundred bucks. No, it's a few thousand bucks. It's thousands to get that work done. And you wonder, well, why would it be so expensive? Why would it cost so much just to paint the bottom of a boat? Let's head on over to the dry dock where they pull boats out of the water. And I'll show you why this is so expensive. But I'm glad we did it because this thing has come a long ways from, you guys have seen where we first bought it. It was really nasty. Now all we get is comments from the people here at the marina. They're like, wow, that turned out nice. It's beautiful. Let's head on up to dry dock. So with such a large boat, or even larger than the ones we have, how do you get it out of the water? A crane? No, not really a crane. A marine travel lift. These straps that are beside me actually connect to the straps that are up there you see hanging, dangling on either side. There's four of them. And they dip that down in the water through this channel. And the boat actually floats over the top of these straps. And then this large pulley system will actually pull it out of the water. And then they can drive this entire contraption all along. And they can pretty much drive the boat wherever they want. They, they put them out over here, along the sides, so that they can be worked on. So you're not going to get that for 50 bucks. That's expensive. This machine is very expensive. And they have to charge accordingly. And I don't have a problem with that. This is the only one on Grand Lake. So some of these boats that are actually here today are not even in the marina here that we're at. They're from all over the lake. They came here for services that can't be done as easy or as cheaply because they don't have that here at this marina. So that's how they get it out of the water. Let's go take a look at this boat right here. It's very similar condition 
that ours was when it came out. So we couldn't be here when our boat was out of the water because we had nowhere to sleep while it was out of the water. You can't connect water and things to it or so. But these are other boats and I've gotten permission from the marina to film these boats. But just as I showed you at the beginning of this video, our boat has nice clean black paint all along the bottom. But before that, this is what it looked like. Disgusting, nasty algae. It actually smells. I know you guys can't smell through the camera, but it smells like rotting vegetation. It's really, really bad. But this stuff just piles up thick. Actually, there's an issue at any marina here on the lake that most people are not aware of, and it's actually a fish called carp. And they love this stuff. They love to eat it. And all night long, they're underneath. They have like a cartilage scoop or something inside their mouth. And all night long, you hear... I mean, it's loud. It's gronk, gronk, gronk. And they're just crunching on all, all this stuff. It doesn't hurt the boat. It doesn't hurt the paint. But they just love to munch on this stuff. The way to get rid of that so you can actually get some sleep is to have the boat hauled out just like it is. They sandblast and clean all this paint off and put fresh paint with copper that's infused in the paint. With that copper, this stuff won't grow. It, it, it doesn't want anything to do with it. So you have a clean bottom for quite a long time and no carp munching on your boat. Let's take a look under here and see how they hold these things up out of the water. So if you take a look at this picture here, you actually see our boat out of the water and some of the crust and nastiness that was on it. It was a very similar situation to this. I'm so glad that it's completely serviced up now. One of the things that Mrs. Wizard commented about is when these things are in the water, you think that there's a whole lot underwater still, but there's not. It's actually not very much underwater. This was the water line right here. From here down was water. All the rest all the way up there is out of the water. Like ocean going ships and things that have displacement holes, there's a great deal underwater. But these are planing holes, so they're not so much as far as deep into the water. It's more, it's wide and flat. Let's kneel down and take a look at how they're holding this thing up. So as you can see, the center or the keel of the boat is being supported by wood blocks. The majority of the weight is on those wooden blocks. Obviously, it's not going to hold itself up. It'll teeter-totter and fall over. So that's why these screw jacks are in place on either side to align it and keep it upright and from falling over. So these do hold some weight, they're, but they're mainly keeping it from falling over. The majority of the weight is on the wood blocks. Let's go ahead and go to the aft portion of the boat. So here we have a sacrificial anode here at the rear of the boat. There's also one on either trim tab. What that does is keep the galvanic action from destroying the metal, actually pitting it and corroding it into oblivion. You would rather this get corroded than the hard parts in the rear that you would have to replace. It's a lot cheaper to replace these. Here we have one that's actually been painted or it's 90% been done. And this gives you an idea of what the bottom of our boat now looks like. There's a little bit of staining here. That's just from rain or whatever washing dirt down. There's nothing wrong with the paint. You can see it's nice shiny black, and if you look underneath, no algae, no crap growing on the bottom. Just nice, clean, smooth paint. This will actually give a little bit more smooth running action when you're on the water, less drag. All that algae buildup will actually make it hard for the water to flow over the bottom. It can actually cost you some fuel economy. When it's completely smooth and new like this, it'll actually just glide a lot easier across the water. So I bet you're wondering, what about the spots where the jacks are? How do they paint those? Well, once this paint is dry, which it already is, they're going to reposition the jacks to an already painted spot and also move the wood blocks and they can paint the spots that they missed. And that takes care of it and they let that dry and then the bottom job is done. So that's what consists of a bottom job. They inspect a lot of different parts and pieces also of the props. Let's go take a look at the actual prop system on another boat. So last time we demonstrated this on a video, we actually used a diagram that was kind of drawn up. But this is the real thing here. 
This is also an anode here on the prop shaft so that the water doesn't attack this metal, it attacks this metal. That's a prop strut there, here's one as well. And inside of these is called a cutlass bearing. And that's what gives lubrication and a bearing surface for this shaft. This shaft goes all the way up into the boat through some drip seals and connects to the transmission. And there is the giant propeller as well. These are things that they inspect when it's out of the water. They check the cutlass bearings, they check the props to make sure they're not bent or damaged. They check all the sacrificial anodes and make sure there's not other damage. One thing that our boat does not have because it's not new enough or it's I don't think these things are out then, I'm not sure, but a bow thruster. You can also have stern thrusters. But this allows the boat to go fully sideways, not front to rear, but completely sideways away from a dock. The motor spins and you can shoot water this way or reverse the direction and go that way and move the stern around. This one's a stern thruster, they also have bow thrusters. So you can see more sacrificial anodes here. One of the sad realizations that has occurred to me from being in a marina now for all summer long, as I'm starting to see that there's a common issue all over the whole world. And that is pretty much abandoned boats. Our boat was bad enough, it's set for a couple of years abandoned basically. We were able to save it and bring it back to life. This one's been here for multiple, multiple years. A guy bought it, he had ambitions to restore it. It's been sitting here ever since. Untouched, hasn't been in the water, and it's just really, really sad. There are actually boats in any marina you go to that haven't even left the dock. They've been sitting there for years and years and years, and eventually they sink. The owners lose interest or they can't afford to keep fuel in it or who knows what the reason is, but there are so many boats like this on the lake. They're beautiful. It would be so cool to see that out on the water, but when will it be on the water next? Who knows? One last look at the travel lift, guys. I'll show you a size comparison. So as you can see, this is not no little five foot tall piece of machinery. I don't know if it was 20 or 30 feet tall. It's huge. And it has to be really strong because some of these boats weigh 20, 40, 60, 80,000 pounds. That's like 15 or 20 Chevy Suburbans being lifted by this thing. And then you have to be able to drive around with it. It needs to be sturdy. This is one serious piece of machinery. It's very, very interesting. So let's head back to the Trojan. There's a few more updates there. And Mrs. Wizard has an update as well. Let's head on back. So this thing has come, like I said, a long, long ways. And me and Mrs. Wizard are really loving this boat. It actually turned out to be, I thought that I would have to drag Mrs. Wizard down here to the lake every weekend, but now it's the other way around. If she doesn't get to go yachting on the weekend, she actually gets very sad and very upset. Isn't that right, Mrs. Wizard? Most definitely. So it's actually worked out for the better. We love our Trojan boat. There's something also that Mrs. Wizard has done. Let's show you that up at the helm before the video is over. So hey, everybody, as we are using the yacht more and more, we're discovering little things you're like, oh, I kind of wish this, or I wish this was a little different. And one of them was up here at the helm, there's the captain's chair and there's a bench seat that the wizard's sitting on now. But that was it. So for those of us passengers, we didn't have many options. You sat back there and sometimes that was in the sun. And while that's nice today in an October afternoon, that's not so great in the middle of July. It got really hot back there. And to be honest, you're kind of close to the exhaust. And shockingly, there's no cats on the boat other than my stuffed one in the galley. So it gets stinky. So one solution we had was to build these boxes. And in my garage, I designed these. And for a while there, there were all these different panels and pieces throughout my garage as we were, you know, as I was sanding it and putting it all together. And this is my design. Wizard helped a little, I'll give him credit for there. But I looked at what we originally had 
And it did have, I did apply teak oil to the bench that Wizard's sitting on, and it does match pretty close. The advantage here is now we've got a seat. And I did just buy just waterproof seats that you would put on your patio. But the other great thing, and another waterproof pillow, because it, you know, looks good. And it also added crazy amounts of storage. And so now we've got, you know, devices that we can throw out. We've got life vests for everybody and it keeps them all safe, dry as well. Did add some structure pieces to make sure this did, you know, last a long time. Nice piano hinge in the back. Got just some simple one bys, you know, give the actual structure. And these panels more are decorative, but they do match the boat. In addition, I added this to the afterwards. So we put the boxes in and we're like, okay, this is okay, but I kind of would like something to lean against. And so I found these pillows and I designed these to put here and this works much better. So now when I sit, you can lean back and not feel like you're gonna go tumbling off into the you know the lower aft uh, deck. Also added a couple of cup holders here because we didn't have any. There was no cup holders up here at all. So it's kind of like, okay, I can hold it, but I don't always want to hold my drink. We also, besides this one, there's another one. We have another exact one on this side, has another backrest on it, does have another cup holder. And if we lift it up, lots more storage as well. Notice that there is a white strap on both of them and that keeps it from flying off and it makes it easy as well just to take these off because we don't leave them up here over you know the week when we're not here or over the winter. I don't want them to get gross and disgusting. And we chose a dark blue, mostly because if they do get stains on them, they're just gonna be easier to clean. This cover does come off, it does unzip off. So if I want to, I can run it through the washing machine, get it all nice and perfect again. But again, look at all the storage. We've got some play toys down there. We got our sunscreen, our bug spray, hats. It's just working out so well. And again, the pillow just completes the package all together. I didn't leave the wizard out. I did find this great cup holder and it just suctions down. It's pretty sturdy on Amazon. Got that. So he has a spot for his drink as well. I didn't want to leave him out. The only mod I had to do on this is I did drill a couple of holes in the bottom just in case water came in. We didn't want it to just set and get gross and disgusting. So it does give it a chance to at least drip out, have a better chance to evaporate on the bottom part here as it would in here. The other thing I've found, this is a great plus, is when we're out and about and it's sunny, it's easy to slide our phones in there. It stays pretty confined and it provides shade for them because we don't always want it in our pocket, chance it could go overboard. But under here, it gives it a nice shady spot that we don't lose our phones. Got one more thing to show you guys. Let's go to the back deck. The last thing was, I know Wizard mentioned our new boat name. These are vinyl graphics that I ordered off of Amazon. All I had to do was find the font I liked, the design, type in the letters that I wanted, lo and behold, it gets shipped here. And then all you do is just apply it on. It was really pretty easy to put on. Uh, it was not the first time I've done this vinyl graphics before, and they turned out pretty good. The nice thing with being a fun, playful font like this was that even if one of the letters did get a little higher or lower, it didn't matter in the overall design. And we thought Cassiopeia was also perfect because it is a Trojan with Cassiopeia. We're just gonna stay in Greek mythology. Anyway, I think that's enough updates today. Let's wrap this up. So I'm glad you guys could follow along on this really sweet Trojan boat. We're getting close to the end of the season and that'll be a video that's coming up showing how we actually winterize all the different systems in the boat. But these are some of the things as we're wrapping to a close this year. We made sure and got those projects taken care of before it gets too cold. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to wor actually work on this boat, not just in the shop, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and I appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's so many more cool videos coming. Thanks for watching.